Hello and welcome to our final round coverage from Jomez Pro at the 2019 Glassblown Open presented by Dynamic Discs. Our coverage is supported by the PDGA. Big Sexy Commentary here with you, Nate Sexton and Jeremy Colling. You know, Nate, I, I know a thing or two. I know there's a lot of things I don't know. But one of these things I do know, this is going to be the most exciting round of disc golf I think we'll ever have covered. I, yeah, it's, it's going to be outrageous. We I got mean, Paul, we got Eagle, we got Rick. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh, to give the fans what they want, James Conrad. Wow. <laughs> Don't ever stop. <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't his head bobbing. That was the wind ripping his head from side to side. It, Ricky is just really strong and can withstand the wind gusts. And he's actually glued his hat on. If, which is the only way it's going to stay on today. If you saw round two, it's worse. <laughs> yeah. Today it's a for lot. round four. It mm-hmm. is one of the windiest rounds we've seen on the tour. You just get ready, folks. This is going to be... I, I, I'm literally like shaking. I'm so excited about this round because it's going to be the hardest conditions on a course that's already hard when it's calm. And we're talking 40 mile an hour gusts. Champion, We've got a tight battle. Macbeth has three strokes on Eagle, four on Conrad, and five on Ricky Wysocki, but ten strokes could be not not a safe lead in, in these conditions. I agree. But we are on hole one, which is playing easily the lowest of par. Straight tailwind on this par five, which is like the safest wind possible. You can really lean into a big shot and if you want to play for eagle it's definitely in the cards from boulder colorado sponsored by disc mania the 2018 glass blown open champion eagle mcmahon paul had a nice shot just kind of low up the middle oh. <laughs> get loose eagle i love that the bird is like he's a music enthusiast. Mm-hmm. Like he he uh, he goes to a lot of shows. Mm-hmm. He's got a lot of bands he really likes. Oh, there's a bird. That's an omen. Oh wow! So I'm sure he's he probably relishes a chance to have the tee off song because he's a music guy. He's a cultured young gentleman. Oh yeah. Sponsored by Innova, James Conrad. <laughs> and with that tailwind, uh, it's gonna be hard for James to be able to see without yep. the hair in his eyes. Yeah. He's got blinders that would just rip. A little James Brown action for James Conrad. A little. This needs to sit. Oh, that's lifting. I think it should be fine. Oh, no. Mm. Oh, man. Big wind boost. Yeah, that's not boost you're looking for. And from Fort Mill, South Carolina, sponsored by Innova, the 2016 and 2017 world champion, Ricky Wysocki. Such a pleasure to be able to cover the same card the last two rounds for the most popular players on tour. With good reason. Mm Mm-hmm. Ricky going high, going big shot. Almost Anheuser release. I think that's a really smart play with mm-hmm. the tailwind. I, sh- I wish I would have thought of mm-hmm. it. Get that roll forward. Nice little huck lab dive. So much fun to watch those things spinning. That was a crush. Macbeth does a really conservative drive. Kept his uh, tee shot low. Yeah. Really not. He's not thinking about anything no. but a birdie. He's mm-hmm. just trying to play with that lead. Throw some smooth shots underneath the wind as much as possible. And it's really not that hard of a birdie if you've got an arm even similar to the, the class of a P. McB. Yeah. And I wouldn't get used to... Wow, nice looking shot just over the hill for James. But this whole... These players aren't that stressed at all. Like, this is going to be the last hole. for The, the next 17 holes are all going to be... I was stressed already. Okay. Just because I was already thinking about the putt, mm. you know, like, I don't know. I was not just, like, free and easy here. Okay, Eagle is Whoa. now. Oh, sit. 
that is OB right there, but he's safe. Like that path is pretty scary. Yeah, it's within the circle. But Eagle is going to have an eagle putt on the first hole. What a crush. Mm -hmm. Long of the basket in two. Thousand, almost 1,100 foot hole. Rick with a little forward carry. I think he got to about circle two edge. Macbeth. Probably, yep, throwing the zone. You want to leave this short. You he, need that he tail might be in putt. trouble here. Oh, and OB. Yep, and that out of bounds wraps around. So he's in grass, but you can see that that corner is connected to an out of bounds line that strings on the back side of the green. And that is a huge mistake. Mm -hmm. You really want to come up short if you're going to be anywhere on this green. And James, I mean, that is going to be a hard putt. Nice shot from Rick. And look at this crowd. We're going to get some good shots of it, but there are a thousand people at least. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Group. Wow. Great effort with that strong right to left head. For an eagle three. And a th that would have been a three stroke swing right off the get go. You wonder how much he even really, you know, at a certain point, it's like mm -hmm. two strokes is pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like you don't want to mess around and rim off the basket and go for a roll or anything. He didn't look super committed to me. I'm sure he's trying to make it, but mm -hmm. sometimes the wind will throw your putt down so fast it almost looks like you were laying up when you definitely weren't. And James with a great putt for par. That's a that's a great save after the out of bounds tee shot. And yeah, I'm gonna wager a guess to say that's gonna be one of the five or six longest putts we're gonna see all Look day at long. This. Look at this. We got a chase card check in. Okay. Chris, Chris Dickerson. Dickerson. Good low line what? drive and that big lift. Oh, this, this is, is going crazy far. And look at that roll forward. That's way that's past like, Ricky's drive. That's like maybe pushing 600 feet. And he's going to be able to see the pin completely because he's at the top of the hill. Anthony Look Brill. at that string beam rip. <laughs> the self-proclaimed Prince of Jomez, <laughs> Anthony Burrell. And look at that thing slide what? forward. <laughs> okay, so I have a feeling that we're checking in here because something special is about to happen. That's how they usually do it. They These usually, Jomez yeah. boys, they like to build that drama. They do like to throw in a He be just ball. going dead straight in a tailwind. How's he getting it to turn over? Have you ever seen him throw, man? Okay, so he is about 45 feet. Chris looks like he's aiming a little bit more hyzer, and that is looking pretty nice if it gets down, and that crosswind's pushing wow. it down. Those are two <coughs> eagle looks. You gotta be kidding me. Look at that flag stick, kind of calm. Yeah. And AB, with the highest birdie percentage in the field going into this round. And also, the only person to eagle this hole coming into this round, and that's the second eagle he's taken. He eagled it during round two when it was the only other windy round that we had. And look at the scores. I mean, Chris in for Eagle. So these guys, you know, keep in mind, Macbeth bogeyed. These guys are 14 and 13. Macbeth bogeyed to go to 17. This is, these guys are yeah. right in it still. Mm -hmm. You know, like right away, three shots, way more than four players in contention right I, now. I think somebody from third card could win this tournament oh, if, thanks, if, yeah, I mean, I, I just think anyone is in this the field yeah, could, totally could win right. if you totally are within right. 10 to 12 strokes. I mean, not to say that Macbeth is going to have a meltdown or, or anything like that, but anyone is in, and I think you're going to start seeing it starting like right now. Hole two is playing ridiculous. Really hard. <laughs> yeah. And it's just playing ridiculous. Yeah, all of them. Because it's this is like just a raging wind, but mostly just straight headwind. And this hole is already pretty far. Mm -hmm. And the out of bounds, I mean, these guys are playing it very smart, just going from 300 feet mm -hmm. low in bounds the whole way. But this is, this hole I thought was just maybe the worst orientation to the wind. I mean, to go headwind on this hole that's already so long, so much out yeah. of bounds. And <laughs> these drive, these discs are just getting punished. They're man. going nowhere. <laughs> it's like, it's funny to watch uh, the best in the world just look. 
I don't want to say silly because it's not that. It's just, <laughs> just like three hundred. You can't really do much better than that. No, it's it's a uh, it's fun in a way. And I I'll say as we see James throwing a bit low, can that oh, rock no. now getting pushed down? And that will be a really hard up and down having to crest the hill and keep it low and getting it down. There's a lot of things to come in that come into play. Yeah. If you get up to the top of the hill and make you're making your life so much easier on that approach. I'm having fun watching this and mm -hmm. I'm having fun remembering my round. <laughs> but during it I was have I was not having fun. That's so it's so stressful. It's interesting because spoiler alert. Well, no, I'm not gonna say what you don't shot. Spoil it. I'm no, not gonna, okay. don't even dare. All right, all right. But if you say it then people are okay with it. I think. No. Spoiler alert. Oh, no. That's the sink ships pass. in Titanic. Like, sorry <laughs> to tell you that. That's just what happens. All right. Eagle going low. Heiser, he had the best drive in the group. And can he really reach it now? No. Can. And look at that. It just it's, goes it, backwards. It, <laughs> moving forward, as soon as it hits the ground, it just jumps backwards 10, 15 feet. But um, what I was going to say is. There's a Sexton Firebird going dead straight because of the wind. Yeah, and that's exactly that ceiling that I'm talking about. Having to clear the hill, to, you can't keep it lower. And if you get it up at all, it's going to lift, and it's going to hit that ceiling. There's just no way to get up and down from where James was. And I'm sure Ricky's aiming yes. to go long or park it, and he's parked it, which is better than going long. But you have to play to the tailwind side if you want to have any sort of consistency or predictability in your putting game. And Paul with just a super Oh, putt. my wow. God. What? what a wrist action putt right there just so much spin be able to control that pace and accuracy from that distance into the wind is uh, really 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 good James having to just play a layup for his five and Eagle doing the same for his par four and I got to shout out Luke Humphreys on my card one of the three birdies on the day only three only three yeah Kevin Jones and Isaac Heinen uh, though I, I, I told him albatross. You just yeah. got an albatross, my friend. <laughs> the hole averaged 4.81. I mean, and it's only the fifth hardest hole. I mean, it's averaging almost a whole stroke over par. Wow. <laughs> it's hole, pretty cool. Hole three, par three, also going into that headwind, 489. I'm not going to say unreachable, but it's close. I mm -hmm. mean, these guys might be able to do it up the middle with a kind of a super overstable driver that gets turned a little bit by the wind. I'd be pretty surprised if anybody goes wide hyzer. Back in wide hyzer. Yeah, exactly. Well, and here's Eagle going wide hyzer. <laughs> yeah, forehand. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, we saw Eagle just park the missile every other time we've mm -hmm. seen him play it. Into this headwind, he's going to a different disc, and he's just not even entertaining the idea. I Remembering back to last round, I, I threw my most overstable driver, and my disc did a U-turn left out of bounds. I, and I'm looking at my group like... <laughs> Yep. Is, oh my you gosh, Rick. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Really? That was amazing. And that that reminds me of um who who did that second round? Was it Calvin or James Conrad or I can't remember. Oh, somebody put it in the circle and made the putt for two and it was I think it was James, yeah. Wow. Because he bogeyed hole one and then he birdied the next three afterwards. See if he can do it again. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if that's, you know, I can't believe that Ricky's even trying to play for the birdie. That's, oh, and see, that's a Firebird right there. And he went. He tried to go slight Anheuser on the Firebird. Did he get back in? He did. He cut. He cut down. I think that he hit the right side of the nice. ground, of the or the left side of the card path, and just stayed right there. Nice. Uh oh. Yeah, that's gonna be a tough left to right putt, but left to right's pretty good for a right-handed putter. You can put with a little bit of hyzer and it'll push it down like a tailwind would. You go with a nice approach there, not going to leave anything to chance. And see if Paul's trying to give this another run. He is like trying to make these. Yeah, which I mean, is... everyone else is just like, how can I get a par? Everyone else is like, how can I get a bogey? <laughs> really? I mean, that's kind of what it seemed like for most of the round. Here's James for a par. Oh, great effort. A little high. Yeah, it looked like he just had a tail, even. And look at this putt for birdie for Rick. I mean, again, we're talking about... That is... That's an eagle. I mean... Here comes Rick. That Moves is, to 15 under. 
The only birdie of the day. Really? The only birdie of the day, dude. Wow. And dudettes. You know? We know you're out there, dudettes. It's uh, pretty crazy. And, you know, I, I think it's funny because you just you were just talking in the last hole about how you weren't having fun, but it's fun reminiscing. Yeah. I will say right now, you beat me by 12 strokes. That's a spoiler alert, okay? I got rocked. 12 shot difference between your round and mine. Yesterday was one of the most fun rounds of my life. I've never smiled or laughed <laughs> as hard. And it's just like, what are you going to do, man? If you're going to get upset, you're just going to get defeated out there. You have to just enjoy it because... You don't play in 40 mile an hour winds, man. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. Hole four, 423, difficult wind again. Look at this thing just bouncing around. This is needs to sit down quick. No way that can hang on. Yeah, that's off the car path. Watch out, gallery. That's coming in quick. It looks like he went out of bounds in the circle, probably pin high, which is not that far away from the pin. I think this is probably a metal flake max and eagle. Uh oh. Wow. This is going to need some help from the trees. Yeah, watch out, gallery. Such a tough shot. You 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 really want to go super super overstable because you can't swing it wide like you normally would. Mm -hmm. But you want to get that thing straight, and that's a great line right there. Just flipping it up ever so slightly. Rocket. Power. Oh man, that just came out like a rock. Mm -hmm. That was such a clean release. Super good power. Kept it on a pure hyzer line. Let's see it one more time. It's going to stand up a little bit right in here, and that's the key. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see is the fluctuations in the height. You can see the disc just bouncing up and down. Yeah. Great shot. Mm -hmm. Maybe this Paul guy's not done yet. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> the guy who's won like seven straight tournaments on tour. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, what is James doing? That I was think, a misrelease. Yeah, I'd, maybe he was trying to fight the wind with an Anheuser and just have it pushed down into the grass. Yeah. You know, I think that was maybe a smart play. You know, on paper? On paper, but yeah, just an early release. And really the only one who isn't in position to save oh, par, but man, he almost did it anyways. That was maybe a driver. That was really a great effort. Jump putt driver. And Eagle's going to give at least one stroke, probably two. Definitely two. It, yeah, Paul's part. Yeah. All of them gonna seed two strokes to the leader here. Yeah, and the man is in, and we're gonna check in for it with Matt from DD. So our card is putting some green numbers on the scorecard, which is pretty awesome. But uh, Macbeth extending that lead to back to three, right where we started. Hole five, par four, 666 feet. This one playing kind of with a tailwind today, uh, but still going to be tricky. You got to find a way to get that disc in bounds. As I've been saying, you would really like to be on either the right or left edge here. Unless you're just going to go crazy distance, then it really doesn't matter. Paul looks like he's targeting that right edge. Ooh, Ooh a little bit scary. <laughs> yeah. that, that'll be a that'll be a good spot. He's gonna be happy with that. Have a pretty open backhand hyzer to the green. Yeah, and as we've seen all weekend, you can't really trust that grass to skip anywhere on this course. You think it's going to, and sometimes it does a bunch. Sometimes it's just Velcro. Dude, Rick is going big. <laughs> oh my goodness! Straight tailwind and wow! <laughs> oh my god! Is that? That's the farthest drive I've ever seen. Yeah, yep, that's big. That's a jump putt to the basket. I've never seen anyone throw it there. Wow. Big tailwind, big risk, big reward. An eagle playing safe here, forehand over to the landing zone. He's going to go backhand hyzer from there. Mm -hmm. Backhand hyzer is so tricky on this hole. Even though it is a right to left green, it seems so fast, and so many shots want to go out of bounds left. That wind is pushing a lot of discs out into that fairway that's out of bounds on the left side of the green. So if you are going for that hyzer shot, you want to keep it really wide at that car path and have it skip roll into the left. 
James with a big drive. He's on three straight bogeys, so you'd like to see him recover and here with a nice birdie. Paul keeps it in bounds. Yeah. And have a tricky headwind-ish putt. But I think he's going to be happy with that shot. And that was probably a mid-range. If that had been a driver, there's no way that thing would have checked up. Yeah. Eagle going to go underneath. This is not enough power, is it? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, it's too much. And see, that's... It didn't hyzer for him. He threw it so soft, I thought it wasn't going to be enough. He needed a little more angle there. That's a that's an unfortunate OB. I really like the play, though, the sidearm to come back into the green. Yeah. And now James, I think. Oh, no. And that's Stop. not going to hang on, I don't think. Yeah. It does. And just he, barely. Once he takes his meter, should be pretty manageable. Look <laughs> at Rick. Never seen somebody jump out to this point. Not, not once. That is crazy. 660 foot. Uphill. He, he, that was probably 590 foot drive. Oh my gosh. Elevator up. All up. the way up to the band. <laughs> Down and he's back to it. the rim. <laughs> that one's for the fans. <laughs> I normally, when I see that putt, I call it a miss because it doesn't go in. <laughs> Not because I missed my line. No. Wow. And that looked like a driver. I could be wrong, but I think that was a wide rim disc. All in for a birdie. Another two stroke swing. No, no, just a one stroke. One. Yeah, just McMahon made his putt correct. Yep. Yeah, so that's a four stroke difference. And Ricky is now tied with Eagle. James falling back just a bit. Hole six, par three, 343. And kind of on the top of this hill, at least for me, I don't know about you, Germ, but I felt like this was about as strong as I felt the wind all day. Yeah, this was. This seemed like this was the culmination of as windy as you're going to possibly get. I think it's if the basket is as windy as it was for us, you're going to see this basket literally rattling. Yeah, we'll see how these guys, how windy it is for them. But yeah, we had... Easily 30 can sustained at the top of this hill. Mm -hmm. And Macbeth going for that wide hyzer with the Predator, uh, but that is going out of bounds, and that was a mistake that was made so many times by the field on what was the easiest hole all weekend up into this round. This playing as the third easiest hole of the day. Rick trying to go to school on that, get a little bit wider, yeah. and I think he did. That is looking good, but man. That is still going to be a nervy putt <laughs> if the wind picks up. Yeah. <laughs> it is so weird to, to see a 13-foot putt and literally have no idea if, if the player is, has a chance of making it. Is this a putter? It looked to be either. It looks really blunt. And, and that's the side of the basket you really want to be on. He's coming up a bit short. We'll have a nice tailwind to help him commit to a strong putt right at the band to drop down. And this is definitely the MD4 that we've seen James throwing for a couple years now. Right, nice and straight. He needs wow, to get down. That is great. A little long, though. He needs to get down, yeah. And that, I mean, good luck laying. I mean, I know, he'll lay that up. I don't think he can make that putt. They got, they got a good break with this win. It's not that horrible mm. right now. And we could potentially see another two-stroke swing. Yeah, this is, I don't want to say calm because I can't feel the pressure, you know, yeah, at that yeah, time. Yeah, but the basket's not vibrating. So. Okay. Great I'll putt. eat my words. That is Great putt. an awesome shot. And, yeah, that is a driver putt from James Conrad. He is really trusting that. I think that's a Firebird putt. Nice. Have you tried that? I have. There's the two-stroke swing. 30. And with the wind being down as it is, I, this should be pretty routine for Ricky. Nice. Ricky to minus three. That is a hot start. <laughs> he's not, you're, wow, he's under par. He's got four birdies already. That's um, That wasn't something we saw much on the course <laughs> during round four from the field. Hole seven, par four, 669 feet through the tunnel. Initially, the fairway is out of bounds, so you need to get across that cart path to find safe area. 
right side fairway line, left side cart path, deep of the basket, about 50 feet OB as well. These guys in these conditions, I think they're gonna just throw low backhands through the tunnel, try to keep it under the wind as much as possible. Try to get about 400 feet if you can, but don't let that disc rise because it's gonna go OB if it gets up in the air. And Rick with a oh, good looking yeah. shot does slide back wow. in bounds and that's a great advance. Yeah, that's not quite as far as he would like, but I mean, no complaints. Oh, Eagle's gonna show us the wide hyzer here. Super overstable disc. Is that too wide? I don't think so. That should be fine with that. Hey, what? I don't what? think it's nearly fine. That was super wide. Wow, and isn't there a right to left? Maybe. Oh. Well, it's a right to left headwind, so maybe, yeah. It's wow. mostly headwind, I feel like. James? No, there's no way. I don't like it. That's even wider than Eagles. Well. Oh. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a choreographed dance from the spotter. Semaphore code. <laughs> And, is, and Macbeth is also going Heiser, even though the last two drives were out of bounds. And has Macbeth gone to school? I think he has. Okay. I don't know where it is, but I know it's safe. That's a lot of trust in the spectator's name. Oh, man. Eagle. That is Give so... Give them a show. Give them a show. Much trust in that disc. Don't go that way, disc. No, no, no. Good recovery shot. That should be a, a pretty routine up and down for a five. It's a result you can live with, I believe, after the out-of-bounds tee shot. And James is going to be out-of-bounds twice if that doesn't hit anything. Oh, okay, it's Heiser down. I think I'm 0 for 7 on my calls so far this round. I am not on point. Stick with it, man. What a shot. Sit, oh. sit. That's a putt. Mm -hmm. Paul got way over here, huh? And is that going to... Yeah, it gets pounded down from the wind. A really difficult approach. You see Paul just throw his hands up like, what am I supposed to do? And mm -hmm. I think everybody was feeling that way. <laughs> yeah. You know, because you would think you, you know, best laid plans. You would feel like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. This is going to work. And then just the disc is going the opposite <laughs> way. <laughs> You're like, yeah. okay, like... I don't have a disc mm -hmm. for that, I guess. Mm -hmm. No one does, man. No one does. Check. Yep, that'll yeah. work. Very nice checkup. And James also with a great approach. Should be able to get his five. Eagle, nice layup. Mm -hmm. Throwing it hard and low. And Ricky, can he go four under with five birdies in the first seven holes? He can. Oh, my goodness. And look out, world. Yeah, wow. What a great look at what he had driving in that flat spin putt. And the, and the battle is on. One shot game. Wow. One back. What did he start off? He was five. Five back? Something like that. Well, he's four under. Yeah, he was five back. Macbeth is even. He's five under or four under. Yeah, wow. Man. This is getting good, folks. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't take long, but here we are. We've got we got a three headed three horse three headed horse. We got a three-headed horse, and it's three -headed racing horse itself race. to the finish. <laughs> Hole eight, <laughs> par five, 990, OB everywhere. I wonder how aggressive these guys will go off the tee. I saw a lot of players backing way off in the wind and maybe even going putter, just put it safe. But I don't know. I mean, I still felt like big, big shot was the play. Ricky yeah. clearly feels that way. He's actually going bigger than ever. And that's got turned over. That's got to get back. No, I don't think no. it will. Oh, that is going to be a very difficult par. Okay, well, you can see the feather banners are just putting on a display of how strong their support are. And look at Paul just go super low. Yeah. 
and that's a great play because that wind is pushing it down. Yeah. You could be really aggressive. You could take your most overstable disc and throw it right down the middle, and it wouldn't go left. That's at least 100 feet short of where Paul would go in less wind. Mm -hmm. Are you and, crazy, Eagle? Yeah, that's the... This is gone. This is so OB. That's a crazy shot. Yeah. He's trying to go turnover? I, yeah. He's... He's trying to go for maybe an eagle look, which I don't. He's lost his mind. He's, <laughs> somebody find eagle's mind. James, that uh, looks like it would be out of bounds any other day. I think it's going to be in bounds today. Wow. Yeah. It's just pushing it down. Just That wind is, a, is an aid in that situation. You can just really pound it down the middle of the fairway and not have to worry about skipping out of bounds where every other round, yeah. that was the fear. Yeah. Oh, no. And Ricky's looking at giving oh all those boy. strokes he's earned right back. Hardly oh. any distance in OB again. Mm. This is looking really nice and controlled. Looks like the wind kind of great mellowed shot. down a little bit. Great shot. Yeah, James is in a great position to give the birdie a look. Shot bouncing around, but finding the middle. Right next to James. And that'll be a good opportunity for James to read Paul's approach. Eagle's in a good position to be able to still pick up his par. Yeah, I agree. Such a big tee shot, and, and you can see he's way up the fairway. And maybe that's part of his calculus. Maybe he sort of thinks, hey, if I go out of bounds way up there, whatever. You know. mm -hmm. So maybe he hasn't completely lost his mind. Mm. Yeah, maybe not. And Ricky's in danger of going out of bounds again. Wow, but that's fortunate. Yeah, I think it was. He may have been able to fight back in, but we'll, doesn't matter now. He is inbounds. Beth's going to play the low line here, see if I can get that slide. It does. Wow. And a birdie in these conditions. Hard for birdie, and Rick is looking at a seven. Mm-hmm. Wow. James. That's no. got it. Good. Okay, so he'll be in the circle. Tough putt. Or right on the edge of it. Maybe even just outside, but that will be a difficult putt. However, the green is protected quite a bit and is less wind there than anywhere else in the course. Eagle, yeah. gonna be able to save a par. Really impressive. Sorry, I said you lost your mind. That was a, <laughs> that was actually a pretty well played. Hole. Take it back, man. Let's take him back. And Ricky really needing to get up and down for the seven. Eagle, if you're watching, forgive me in the comments, man. Please. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a tough putt, for Ricky, for his double bogey. This is James for birdie. Mm -hmm. Usually on a normal day, we'll see Rick here for double bogey. Oh, no. Wow. I almost, no, that's a no mez right there. Gosh, you can't do it any better. You have to, I mean, you, I guess you'd like to be a little bit lower, but. Yeah, you if, would. If it's high like that, it's just going to fall out. It's just... Wow, and Rick with mm. such a charge, and now... Derailed a four-stroke swing just like that, back That's to where we started. crazy. Right back to where we started. And, and what an impressive birdie for Macbeth. Yeah. If you're leading the event and you're going to birdie the third hardest hole of the day, or fourth hardest hole of the day... Only three players able to pick up the birdie. A.J. Risley, Logan Bowers, and there we see a check-in with the leaderboard through eight and the replay of the Nomez. And look back on... Slow Mez is past. Yeah. Look at that. Bounce, bounce, bounce in. Anthony Barella making a charge up into fourth place now. And Conrad down four spots, three over. Really? Through eight holes? 
not that bad. <laughs> it really is. And I'm talking about a day like this where you can read someone's lie. Disc golf is such an individual sport, but when it's conditions like this, you really want to see how the disc reacts on the ground and how much the wind bounces. Typically, I don't really care what someone else throws, but on a day like yeah. this, you want to watch everything to see how every disc reacts. Definitely. Hole 9, par 4, 651, one of the toughest on the course. And today, the wind is just ripping up through that tunnel. Try to keep the disc as flat as you can. I think Paul's going to go mid-range, low, straight. Well, high, but straight. It's a little scary. And it's turning over. No. Does not get back in bounds. Drop zone, which is, mm -hmm. as we always have said, as we've been saying, bogey at best. Yeah, and that's in the calm. Yeah. And we are just going straight through this tunnel of headwind. And if that gets over the wall, it does. Yep. That is glorious. I mean, you saw Macbeth's get turned over and James just goes straight hyzer out of his hand. And yeah, <laughs> how do you predict? How do you step up here as Ricky right now throwing a mid range and know what the disc's going to do? You don't care what they do. You that, just do your own thing. That doesn't surprise me at all. Mm -hmm. you, know, you come off of a triple bogey, Rick is going to be as locked in as Rick can get. Yeah. And he's, he needs that shot. He comes through and delivers. Maybe. Oh, no. This Whoa. is out of Oh, look at the drop down. That is going to. Be, I Come on. Think it. Must that was be a, safe. That was a great break, though. Yeah. Ricky, I think, might be one of the best. This is our stats haven't got to this point yet. But if we had a bounce back percentage, I think Ricky would be right up there in the top five. Green. Oh, for sure. I think any player who's a multiple world champion, you mm -hmm. know, you got to have resiliency. You have those bad shots and you come right back and keep punching and keep going all the way to the end. And that's definitely Rick. Paul as well. That's a nice shot from Eagle. We need Dave Clancy. We need Fancy Clancy back for those kind of in-depth statistics. Oh, man, he's raising the dead. You know how he got into necromancy back in the day. That was a real <laughs> Old necromancy Clancy. <laughs> that's not true, Nate. Stop saying that. <laughs> I think that's why we lost them in the first place. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> that's, 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 a, that's some jokes for our, our old school fans. Deep cuts. <laughs> and uh, Paul is just throwing a kite up here on the wind. And that's He's fortunate barely in bounds. Oh, man. And you're going to see exactly, you're seeing exactly why this hole averaged an entire stroke over par at exactly five. I, I thought it'd be the hardest hole of the weekend every round, and it never was until the final round. But with this headwind just coming, ripping up that fairway down that tight chute. Yeah. It made the whole place so... So hard. Nice layup there. Gotta love being in the shadow of the basket on a day like today when you can mm -hmm. just set it down. Don't have to let it out of your hand. Because on the really hard headwinds, even a 10 footer feels like it could raise over the top. And Paul's going to be taking a six. Yes. And this putt for par. For Eagle, and boom, just like that, another two-stroke swing. It's on every hole, it seems like. There's some big move up and down. Yeah. Just when you thought it was over, it's not. They're back. And Anthony Barella, the only birdie on the day. This guy is insane. He is insane. I think uh, wherever Eagle's mind went, it went straight to Anthony Barella, I think. <laughs> He's just out there crushing shots. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're coming back. Nine holes to go. Wind raging. Water carries. Out of bounds everywhere. $5,000 to the winner. Come on back. We'll see you soon. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching our GBO coverage. It was great to get back in the booth with this big fella. 
We got a couple giveaways for you guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Front nine if you want to win this destroyer. But you really want the back nine destroyer, which is this one. So go ahead, comment, like, subscribe. We love you. We're going to see you guys next time.